All right, welcome to the color shift shader overview and tutorial. I'm gonna go over the features of the shader, how to use it and how to prepare your assets best for it. So let's get right into it. Um, this is a new Unity project. All I've done is import the hue shift shader and uh, some sprites for use as examples. Um, all of the sprites are taken from my game Nowhere Profit. Um, it's a roguelike deck building game I've been working on for a while. Anyway, uh, with all that plugging out of the way, um, what you need to do with the um, uh, images imported, you need to make sure they're uh, imported as sprites. Um, if you set your Unity to be a 2D, uh, your project is set to 2D, then they'll be automatically imported that way, but otherwise you'll have to go to a Sprite 2D and UI. Um, a QShift shader only supports sprites and UI images. It does not work with anything else, um, which is why um, the example I'm going to show you are all going to be sprites and UI things. So let's get started with a sprite. Um, let's put on the Feral Jaw Killer, put it at a position where we can see it, and scale it up a bit. There you go. Um, that's a dude. We're just going to call him Jaw Killer because he has this huge bone jaw protrusion there. And now this is a Unity default sprite. And what I want to do is I want to recolor his sort of orange jacket um, dynamically. Um, the way to do this is to use the shader on the sprite. And to use a shader on the sprite, you need to use a ma create a material. So let's create a material first. Uh, create material. Let's call this jaw killer mat. And then what you need to do is go to UI, uh, oh no, sprites, and then we go for default U shift. Diffuse U shift um, creates sprites that um, can take lighting, but for now we're gonna ignore that. So default U shift, it is. Um, You'll notice the reds, you can easily ignore that. That's gonna be, uh, that's be there because there's no image in here and the image is always taken from the sprite directly. Um, what you need to do now is to deselect the material and reselect the material because then uh, the material has a custom inspector that only shows up once you re-update uh, the inspector. So now you can see there's a bunch of options um, which we'll, I'll go to in, this, in a second. You'll see the note here also that changed nothing in the image, set the color to 128, 128, 128, 256. The color does not mean the tint. This tint is supposed to remain white. Uh, what I'm talking about is the color here. So let's do that and you'll see since we still have the default material on here, everything's sort of turning grayish. 128, 128, 255, there you go. Um, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply the jaw killer material and you'll see he's suddenly back to his original sort of uh, shape. So let's, uh, the reason why I went for 128, 128, 128 as a baseline is because um, to change the hue, saturation and value of the sprite, uh, you don't change the material, which allows you to use the same material for a different sprite, but use the color of the sprite instead. Um, and it works like this. If you change the red value, you're going to change the hue. If you change the green value, you're going to change the saturation. And the blue value affects the value, the so lightness of the image. Um, if I move these sliders in a second, you'll see. So let's start with red. Uh, you'll see the hue of the entire image shift. Sort of changes the entire image, shifting it. And since it's in the middle, you can shift in either direction. So if I go left, it starts turning purplish. And if I go right, it starts turning orange, yellowish, going to green, blue and then turning into purple, and then back to red. So add the maximum range of the slider, the minimum range of the slider, and the middle of the slider, um, you have the same hue value. Um, so you can sort of go around one direction. Um, when it comes to saturation, uh, middle means it's the saturation of the image. If you increase it, you sort of increase the saturation. You can see it as the image, let me zoom in a bit, as the image sort of increases its saturation and if you go down you can reduce saturation until there's no saturation left and uh, for value it's sort of the same if you increase value everything sort of whitens out and sort of you end up at a complete almost completely white at the end you don't because the colors are at the maximum value if we desaturate you sort of end up there so that's that and if you go all the way down you end up with a black and obviously you can you can sort of do all of these to sort of uh, uh, change the flavor of the image a lot. So um, now let's say I only want to affect certain parts of this image, uh, which is where it gets interesting. So one way to do this is by going back to the material, and you'll find these HSV options. Let's use alpha as an HSV mask or use hue range to limit HSV. So let's use the hue range for this example. So I'm going to accept that. Um, now this material will apply these filter to all um, the sprites it's applied to. 
Um, I'm gonna when I'm gonna show the other one in a second. You'll know uh, uh, when that makes sense and when it doesn't. So now here's the hue range, and what the the shader will now do is change the hue saturation value um, of all the pixels of the texture that are within this hue range. Um, it's sort of difficult to explain, but if I you see if I change this, some parts of the image sort of vanish, sort of return to their original state. If now the hue max and min hue ranges are the same, nothing's basically gonna change. So what I wanna do is I wanna sort of filter out the part that I want to change, which is only his sort of orange red cloak, like this. So now um, this part is within that given hue range. So let's shift a little, give it a little bit more. Yep. Yeah. So now as I move these stats around, the filter I've set up will only change this part of the of the image. As you see, there's some of the uh, same colors up here and up here, so changing that will also affect everything else. And you can see if you go lightness, sorry, <coughs> if you see the lightness, you can clearly see which parts have been directly affected. So in this way, I can sort of turn everything black. So that's one way to limit uh, uh, hue range. Um, it's generally a good approach to slap it on the sprite you want to use it with and sort of go for very extreme values and then sort of because then you can see best and then go like uh, this should be in there and this shouldn't be in there and then figure out um, uh, which part which uh, hue range you actually want um, as you can see if you might not want sort of the, these parts to be part of the hue range you would have to uh, put these ones in you would have to change the image there because this pr obviously some, some part of the color of this part is is in there um, but if you sort of remain uh, on sort of a similar lightness um, and these parts are very dark you don't notice them uh, changing hue that much so uh, let's just put that down as well and now we've got a sort of version of the jaw killer that I can recolor based on my whims and desires so let's uh, add a second sprite let's just duplicate that come on duplicate and call it uh, hill tribe. Um, can move that one to the side, and give him the hill trap aggressive. And uh, now, if I change the shoe, you sort of see that he has the same material, the jocular material. And I sort of, it doesn't make a lot of sense because the hue range we defined worked for the jocular, but does not work for this guy. Um, so that's that's a no-no. Um, so if you use the hue range, you'll probably need a material for every sort of hue range you have. If you have a set of sprites that are defined around the same uh, style and same hue range, you can reapply the material. But in this case, I can't. Um, so let's start a new one. And this time I'm going to turn it into, and let's just call it, come on, hill tribe. <sighs> Sorry, hill tribe mat. And this time let's do a diffuse shift material on the hill tribe guy give him the proper material you'll see that uh, since there's no uh, filter on the hill tribe material there's no no Q range uh, the entire uh, uh, guy is being recolored and um, let's add in a hue range again and sort of limit it to his tattoos we can only recolor those let's see if we get that so that looks good now you can only recolor this part of him. And uh, since I've also made this a diffuse sprite, if I add an image, uh, up, sorry, if I add a light, uh, no, there. we should see the light affecting the sprite, which it doesn't for some reason, which I don't know why. Uh, what's wrong there? Something's wrong. Let me just double check the test scene, which... Yeah, down here you can see the shader actually being affected by light. Um, I'm not sure why it's not doing it in my scene. Um, oh, shit, I forgot to save it. Everything's a little bit confused right now. Oh, <laughs> everything we meaning me. Alright, let's add a sprite again. Add the hill tribe, add the hill tribe material. Uh, 
and sort of tune this down to 1 to 8, 1 to 8, 1 to 8. And sort of shift the hue around a bit so we can see if we colored the guy. What you notice here though is this sort of this um blurring sort of color not really shifting on the edges. Um the reason for this is because as these two colors meet, the hue changes in the sort of intervening intervening area. Um that's something that's not really fixable with the um actual hue range filter. Um, that works best for really hard edges on your colors, let's say with pixel art, um, that's a really good option. Another option is to do um, uh, alpha masking. So let's uh, look at this with a UI image. Uh, so let's uh, add a UI image and add, add, add the na nano sort here. Um, it'll look a little bit funny for now, let's just size this up again. And uh, just to explain, the image RGB values look like this. Let's just go to scene. And the image alpha values look like these. I've made specific textures that only show sort of the values there. So that's the RGB, that's the alpha, which is m which explains why you only see the sort of part in the middle. So, um, the what the the alpha mask version of the shader does it uses this alpha in the image uh, as a mask on the RGB values to dis define which ones we're gonna recolor and for that I'm just gonna add a new material because now we're in a UI so it needs a specific difference shader it's gonna call that sword material and we're going to go to UI yep default U shift again you need to deselect and reselect to get the options down here we're gonna say use alpha as HSV mask. So now let's get the one in the middle and usually UI images have no material so let's drag in the sword material and you'll see um, uh, some weirdness happening. The weirdness that's happening is because uh, the way Unity imports uh, the image. What it does is it assumes that the alpha is being used for transparency so it only uh, sort of imports that part, uses temp pixels to smooth out everything else so we we don't have weirdness in them sort of on the corners and then also let's go to wireframe to see that more clearly um, and also um, notes sort of the dimensions of the of the uh, image to only render that part it doesn't create a polygon that's the full size and put in sort of a huge alpha texture but instead only saves this texture if you're so for example if you're using a sprite packer or sprite atlas only saves this part and then knows that it's only needed polygon for this size. But since we're using an alpha texture as an image that also needs to uh, not be transparency, you need to change that in the port settings. So what we need to do is we need to go to the nano sword and there's a little check mark here which says off as transparency, which we're just gonna check off and apply and you'll see it sort of changes. We get the general texture back. But we still have the issue that it sort of uses the alpha as transparency for the sprite packing and the size of the texture. There's another thing you can change if you go to mesh type, you go to full rack instead of tight, uh, apply that, and there we go. Now we have the entire sprite uh, visible. Um, it has created an, a proper sized uh, um, a rectangle, a quad. So now we have the, the sprite set up, we've set the material up, uh, as, uh, contrary to the hue ranges where you need to set the ranges for the um, alpha um, checkbox it's only the checkbox um, and that allows us to now do this sort of right we should also reset this to sort of the basic values wasn't really visible because these are very extreme values but there you go you can now sort of see how only the alpha mask parts change which is really convenient because say for example that's orange in the back is sort of orange on the hilt or these are very close together it might be difficult to hue mask sort of this specific area so this allows me to be very precise and sort of allow me to make lots of different fancy swords um, and this is probably a good a good place to sort of demonstrate the fact that I can do make copies of this one say so move them up and move one down and even though they all use the same material, 
um, they can all have a different color and sort of be different versions of the same sword without you having to redo all the all the things. So that's the main benefit of the shader is you being able to make a lot of variations just by changing the color if you prepare your assets right. So, and that's pretty much it. Um, there's uh, material settings for sprites that are simple and don't take light. There's material settings for uh, sprites that take light and there's a shader for, uh, um, I mean shaders in all cases. So there's a shader for sprites without light, there's a shader for sprites that take light and there's a shader for UI images. And you'll need to create a material um, for each configuration you want. So if I would use more um, graphics with sort of same setup as the sword, I wouldn't have to recreate the material. I could use the same material because it uses its details from the alpha mask and the alpha mask is in the image each time. Only for the hue range it sort of makes sense to uh, create a new material for every hue range you want within your um, assets. Yeah, and that's it. That's an overview of the uh, sprite uh, of over the shader and the material and how to use it. I hope you enjoyed and if you do, please uh, give me a positive review and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. That's it. Thanks.